Uh, wait for a while. Let's go through some of the stuff before we before I go into the details of all the things that uh, all the projects that I want to share with you. Uh, service learning. Uh, this is how we define it in our school. Service learning is a method of teaching, facilitating, reflecting, and learning that brings together academic discipline in a classroom with a meaningful service that occurs through youth engagement in social communities. So here we highlight these two things: meaningful service. Yeah, meaningful. When we say meaningful in terms of we define it uh, according to the participants, students, students, our student participants, and it should be meaningful for them. And use engagement, that means they have to be actively involved in it. By involved in it, it means not only during it, it means before that planning, after that post, whatever things need to settle, presentation, and everything, they have to be involved in it. But of course, not only the students, and there will be staff who will be involved in it as well. And only we call it staff leaders. And the ratio that in our school, as like I said, is about 1 to 12 students for overseas trips. So if you want to bring students overseas, uh, let's say we have 24 students, normally two staff. Yeah, should be two staff. 80 plus students, two, three staff only. Six, six, six. six staff. Six staff. Oh, okay, around there, yeah. Six, so 12 times six. Yeah, it's about that. Yeah. So, uh, that's the normal, I mean, some of the background that I want to provide. And type of uh, service learning project, thanks so much. Type of service learning projects, uh, uh, as we call it in terms of location, uh, the, 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 the place, uh, we can call it over, uh, overseas or international service learning project, which we bring students out of Singapore, including uh, the nearest could be Batam uh, or uh, JB. And by, I've not yet heard that there's any project in JV, but anyway, yeah, uh, I think as near as uh, Malaysia, there are some projects in Malaysia, and uh, it could be as far as, uh, so far as I know, is uh, Thailand, Chiang Rai. Yeah, that's about four hours, three to four hours flight. Yeah. And uh, we're expanding, we're looking for other places as well. I'll be sharing with you more on that. And for local projects, uh, there are different ways to engage the community. And one of the ways that we actually do is through FIP, final year project for our students. So this will have an emphasis on the technical aspect. That okay, although this is a service learning project, but the technical uh, learnings are supposed um, are, are part of the delivery as well by the end of the day, that they are supposed to learn all the things and deliver the work. Rather than okay, I've helped the community by organizing this event. Other than that. So this is like class together. And there are some other projects like uh, we recently we call it CCE projects. Or uh, um, it could be just ECA, CCA, that kind of projects that we uh, on ad hoc basis that we actually engage students in such projects. And this project normally is uh, short term projects. And in terms of uh, the whole duration of the project could be a uh, couple of weeks, couple of weeks, or at most probably one or two months. But, but if you compare to the service learning project, although the service learning project overseas, the international project, is only two weeks overseas, but the planning part and uh, after that, uh, everything to settle, uh, the post uh, uh, tree presentation and sharing reflection, that would normally a service learning project, overseas service learning project, it will take about six months, at least six months. Because in, in our school, we need to get approval at least three to four months before that. So the whole thing will take about five to six months. And for FIP project, it's also about half a year. It's per semester, so it's about four to six months. Depends, okay. And just want to ask some of these questions, like the five W and one H, and uh, like the easiest one, who, where, and let's say what does the community really need? Because when they come to you, sometimes the community, the partner, when they come to you, uh, it is a very small thing that actually they want to start up with. But how do you make that thing into a you know on a bigger scope for the student? Because whatever they ask for, it could be just can be done within a couple of days by a few students. But if you want to expand that scope, and how do you actually understand the partner by you know talking with them by by, by having meetings and by observing and do recce trips to that particular place and identify any learning points or opportunities for the students. So that, that's something we have to look into it. And when is a good time? I just now we mentioned school holiday. School holiday could be one of the best times, but also depends on the community. In some community they have different you know time timeline. So we have to fit into that timeline. Because it's very hard for them to accommodate to certain requests. 
Because one of the projects that I've done, my personal projects that we went to Batan, and then we realized when well, Singapore has school holidays, and the other side are they're busy studying. Yeah, so they're, they're telling us, oh, it's only during this period of time we have so many requests from Singapore that they want to send people or come, but we cannot, we cannot, we cannot do that. Yeah. So that's, that's a time, and how to serve, it, serve them. Sometimes we don't really understand the culture, and in a way we, we didn't do it quite according to the local, you know, kind of uh, procedure. So we have to understand what is the best and why. In a in a in a in a, in a fundamental question, in the first place, why they are in need? I mean, are there any issues that we can tackle? Not just like applying a quick fix. Okay, you need money, I give you money. You need toilet, I give toilet, and you need whatever. Okay, I did, I don't go a little bit further, but I just do whatever you want me to do. So that, that could be some of the things that we discuss. And also from our students' perspective, just now was from the partner or the community perspective, you. And now let's talk about us, we, or me. So who are the students, who are the participants? Because not all the students actually, by, by our, because the nature of a project, it will be different. So not all the students will benefit the most from any project. So there should be a selection of students in a way but provided that we have more than enough people sign up. And sometimes we don't have a choice, then we have to take all the students that we can and make the best use, I mean, use of it. But if there is a chance for us to choose, then we should choose and find the best match. So we'll actually have some of the interviews with our uh, potential student participants. And we'll, we'll share with them a little, little bit of the background of the partner, of the uh, nature of the project, and then we will actually also find out about their own background and what, you know, what they are comfortable of, what they actually uh, would like to contribute to the project and also where to send it to sometimes because the partner they may have a few links here and there and we have to choose in between where, where, where is the better, better, you know, that better option for our students or at least for most of the students and what can our student offer? What can our student offer? Sometimes if you want to drill down a little bit further is that what do our students actually have? I mean what are they capable of doing? Some certain things you will be surprised that students are much better than us, for example, engaging with kids, playing with kids. I go down there, I just look at a kid, and I don't know what to do. And the students, I mean our students, just straight away, they go, okay, let's play this game, and let's do that. And I just see that and you wow, wow, fantastic, fantastic. Yeah. But if this, I mean, these students are doing those things in my classroom, I find very annoying. But while down there, we really need this kind of students. Okay, uh, when is a good time? Holiday, where they, where they interrupt with their own academic studies, and these are few considered. What next one? Why? Why do the student want to join the project? You'll be surprised if you interview some of the students. Why do you want to join? And one of the most common reasons that I heard, because my friend is asking me. Because my friends asked me to join, or because my friends wants to join, wanted to do, to join, so I joined. Yeah, I guess that's actually quite a valid reason because. Some, you always want to feel some form of familiarities even when you are overseas. You don't want to go out with you know, a group of people that you don't, you really totally have no understanding of them, who they are, what, they, you know, what kind of person, the person I mean, he is or who she is. So, I mean, other than this, that pre, they're already friends before the trip. And what we do is that before the actual trip, we actually have uh, programs to make sure that they get to know each other. And we'll train them up. To work as a team, at least at the start, to work as a team, so that when they go there, they are no longer strangers. They are already friends. They are already teams. So they know at least what to expect from each other. So that one is important. How do we make the project meaningful for all students? This will be a question that I keep asking myself throughout the the, the whole project, including while we are down there on the ground carrying out, and then things may change straight away. Certain things we plan. Plan for like days, weeks. Down there, it's just not possible to do it. And you have to change it straight away, within a half an hour or something. And we have to do that. So uh, I told my student, you must be prepared. Whatever you have prepared will not be used at all. But you have to be prepared for that. Yeah. But we have to do it. We have to do the planning. You cannot say that because things may change, you don't do planning at all. Yeah. Because you plan, that's why you know that it will change. It can be changed. Okay. So these are the, some of the questions, guiding questions that I, 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 I find it helpful for me to uh, engage myself in service learning projects. And uh, I share a bit of this just now. Uh, I say some of the destinations that uh, we have been to uh, uh, Thailand, Cambodia, Vietnam, Indonesia, Batam, Sri Lanka as well. 
And normally 20 to 24 students is uh, slightly easier to manage. Like if you go past or so one pass is enough. If more than that, it's, it's harder to manage. If it's too small, uh, sometimes the work cannot be done by, by just, because people need to take a break. You know, for students, that we realize a lot of our uh, physical work um, um, is, is very high, it's very high. And, yeah. and also, think, and I think for our own students, uh, they're not used to it. After to you know, just work, work for one hour is really very time for them. They may need to take a break for another half an hour or something. So we have to plan that, plan for that. Uh, okay, ah, okay. So let's let, let's go through some of the things that actually happened. What happened? This was the first project that I have uh, uh, I have uh, uh, organized. Yeah, it was in two thousand and eight. Uh, Cambodia. Sandwich. Sandwich. Uh, it's called the Sankum Center for Children. Sankum in uh, Cambodia local language means hope. Uh, because these uh, these kids are orphans, and uh, their parents uh, yeah, passed away, died through the war, during the war time. Actually, the thing continued until early 1990s. Yeah. Somehow within, I mean, within, within the country. So, Many, uh, I think all of them lost their parents, and so they were sent that their family members would be on aunties to this center. And the center, as we have seen just now from the photo, the center is quite a uh, well established center among all the other orphanages. If you have, have, get a chance to go to the orphanages in Sandwich, and it's well organized in a way that they have the parcel of land, they can actually build those uh, uh, proper houses in the housing for those, for, for those uh, orphans, and they have a uh, proper uh, like programs, they have actually structured programs for the kids and they are hosting kids. If you can go to the, their website, they are actually helping kids from the, uh, the young age until the uh, young adult age of 16. So then the, 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 they can actually go out for work. So then they can come back as volunteers to contribute back to this, to this community. So it's more sustainable. So once every year there will be some people who actually left the of the, the, the center and they go out. When they start earning money, they can bring back. They can bring back, they contribute some of the money back to the center. So 2008 until now, four years. Four years. Okay. And uh, what did we do? Okay. I and Pra uh, English teaching and they already have quite a good uh, curriculum in terms of English teaching. They have uh, quite a number of uh, volunteers who are native English speaker. Uh, we have games with them. I mean students it's easier for them to actually do this kind of work. Sometimes it looks crazy. Yeah, yeah things crazy. They just roll around on the floor and grass I me. Mean, I try that. It's fun. It's quite fun. Okay. And uh, uh, the, the focus is actually the computer lab setup. They had a very simple computer lab. Uh, actually, maybe just uh, three computers or three or four computers there. But they don't quite uh, utilize those computers. Uh, donated by some of the partners. And so we are going there to actually to, to see how we can make use of the computer. At the same time, we also come up with some other hardware. Uh, we actually bring some of the small, tiny, not at that, at that time we call EPC. I think now they have a more uh, interesting model of EPC. And so we brought some of those small uh, laptops or netbooks to, to actually help them. And also we set up the wireless network. So something very IT, wireless network, so to facilitate the uh, teaching because we need to use sometimes we need to use internet. Yeah, they do have an internet, but it's very slow and it's wired in their office. And so we have to extend that internet to wireless so that everyone has a connection to that when we conduct the workshop. Okay. That's uh, the first one. And as you can see, these are the team members. And in the middle are my colleague uh, Jason and me, and with some students, uh, all of the students already graduated in 2008. If they do do that. It's a problem, and uh, some of the students already are uh, working, and some students choose to study, and even study. I think I think many already, uh, if they choose for uh, private schools, I think some already graduated from SIM, and one of the students just finished uh, army, and uh, he's in SMU year one this year. So it's been a long time, but uh, we still keep in touch with each other okay, uh, on Facebook, SMS, WhatsApp, and we actually meet up quite often. One of the Student was just engaged one of them, well, a couple of uh, months ago. 
Francisco, and we went 